Hi everybody, it is still January 10, 2019. I'm just going to be covering some material to give you an idea that, yeah, the climate action plans, the Paris Agreement, it is being implemented here in the United States. It does not matter if Trump did not sign the Paris Agreement. It is being implemented and that mayors and governors are signing on to an international agreement, well, that should really raise eyebrows with all Americans, but it doesn't. Uh, the president negotiates and signs international treaties. Then it goes to Congress, and they are to ratify that treaty. All of that takes place before it's implemented, but that that well, we don't have a government uh, that we think we do. We just don't. So mayors and governors and uh, county officials signing on to a Paris Agreement. Okay. Well, it is being implemented. And then at the end, I'm going to show you the impact that believing this climate change lie the impact of that lie on individual lives. But I did post a video earlier, as I have posted a lot of videos on this climate change lie. Hi, everybody. It is. Um, so climate change lie, the basis of Agenda 2030, sustainability, it must be stopped. Um, and in this video, I point out all of the scientists, and there are thousands upon thousands of scientists in this country, in the United States, but also thousands around the world who dispute the man-made global warming climate change theory. So if you, yeah, here is much evidence about the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. No. Uh, it is not science. The science is not settled. Uh, There's science for every assessment that they have uh, published or released. Uh, independent scientists have come out and said every report is simply worthy of the nearest trash bin. It's not science. They manipulate the data. It's fraudulent science. This is all about the United Nations Agenda 2030, getting people to believe that climate change, global warming is happening. I will say that because of the technology that man is using to create modify, manipulate, intensify weather fronts. Well, a lot of people, because they've not done the research and they're ignorant, they don't know that the weather is being created, used as a weapon. They then think, well, climate change, global warming is real. It's not. But yeah, the climate, the weather is changing. We do have rather, um, well, let's just say weather anomalies happening quite often, but it's not Mother Nature. It's man creating, modifying, manipulating, intensifying weather. Um, and because man is now controlling weather, they can bring about tornadoes anywhere, like Santa Cruz had two tornadoes a couple of uh, days ago. I got an email from a subscriber. Well, who lives in Santa Cruz? They don't get tornadoes. And then I was on the phone with a subscriber who lives in Chico, California. And while we were on the phone, she got a warning of a tornado in her area. They don't get tornadoes. They're Flash flooding. Flooding can occur now anywhere. You don't need to be living in a flood 
zone to be flooded out because it is not Mother Nature, it's man, and man can bring flooding anywhere. My God, look at the flooding that has occurred in places like, oh, Saudi Arabia. Um, okay, so um, also want to point out, peer-reviewed survey finds, survey finds majority of scientists skeptical of global warming crisis. A strong majority of 1,077 respondents believe that nature is the primary cause of recent global warming and or that future global warming will not be very serious. It will not be a, a very serious problem. This was a survey of scientists and there were four skeptical groups and they blew away the 36% 36, 36 of scientists who believe that global warming is human caused and a serious concern. Now of the 36% the of 1,077, that's approximately 690 scientists don't believe that it's a serious problem, nor do they believe that it is human caused. And meteorologists are global warming skeptics. The American Meteorological Society members shows meteorologists are skeptical that humans are causing a global warming crisis. So this was a survey of those meteorologists who were members of the American Meteorological Society and the majority of them said well no sorry uh, we dispute this man-made global warming theory now did you know that we have an office of federal sustainability yeah we do this is a government website Office of Federal Sustainability and they are implementing Trump's executive order efficient federal operations guiding principles for sustainable federal buildings uh, renewable energy uh, for federal buildings uh, sustainability, sustainability, sustainability. Agenda 2030. We have pretty much every federal agency implementing Agenda 2030 in one way or the other. Department of Energy implementing it in a practical way uh, or the other agencies educating people on climate change and sustainability. This is your Trump administration. Even if Trump and our federal agencies weren't implementing the climate change um, policies along with Agenda 2030, we have mayors, governors, but here this is the Paris Climate Agreement, climate mayors, 407 U.S. climate mayors commit to adopt, honor, and uphold Paris Climate Agreement goals. So, I do still believe that you're watching this stage play and it is, you know, the uh, dichotomy between the red party and the blue party and they duke it out. Nothing ever changes, but you get the red people and the blue people fighting one another 
oh, Trump is fighting uh, all of these uh, deep state agendas. He didn't sign the Paris Agreement. It does not matter. He should be coming out and speaking very loudly about all of these mayors, along with governors uh, and county officials that have signed on to an international agreement. It's in violation of the Constitution. But you're not hearing that. So when you have 407 mayors all over the country implementing the Paris Agreement, it's still going on. So climate mayors, the impact a year after the U.S. left the Paris Agreement. Uh, there's a lot of information on this, but this was before another two mayors signed on, but 405 members representing 70 million Americans. Uh, Anderson, South Carolina, where I live, the mayor has signed on to the Paris Agreement. This mayor here in Anderson, South Carolina is implementing the climate change policies dictated by that Paris Agreement. And I will tell you, I don't know one person here in Anderson that is happy about that. Uh, so are they representing 70 million Americans or are they representing the United Nations? I think it's the United Nations. Yes, it's the most visible in a growing list of coalitions and organizations seeking to demonstrate U.S. commitment to fighting climate change and lowering emissions. The We Are Still In group is Michael Bloomberg's group. Michael Bloomberg is the UN envoy, the IPCC envoy. These people were selected to uh, get everybody believing that climate change is real and get everybody on board to implement the climate change policies along with Agenda 2030. So, unfortunately, I, I have to say the United Nations has taken over our country. They're all over our country. They're in every state, they're in every community, and they are working hard to um, continue reshaping our country as dictated by um, uh, Agenda 2030. You know, I also... Um, want to show you. The United Nations puts out annual reports. How well are we doing? How is the implementation of these Agenda 2030 sustainable goals doing around the world? But this is the United Nations review of the United States, how they're doing with their Sustainable Development Goals Index ranking. Um, the top 10 U.S. city regions, San Jose, Sunny Valley, Santa Clara, California. You are doing the best with Agenda 2030. Then you've got Provo, Orem, Utah, Seattle, Tacoma, Bellevue, Washington, San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward, California, San Diego, Carlsbad, California, Albany, Schenectady, Troy, New York, Boise City, Idaho, Oxnard, Thousand Oaks, Ventura, California, not surprised to see a lot of California communities on this list. The top 10. Um, Boston, Cambridge, Newton, Massachusetts, 
and Portland, Vancouver, 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 Hillsboro, Oregon, Washington. Top 10. The highest scoring. You guys are just fabulous in getting those sustainable goals. The Agenda 2030 of the United Nations. Getting it all cemented in your area. What's the the bottom 10? Cincinnati, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana. Milwaukee, uh, Wakusha, I'm sorry, West Alice, Wishingen. Um, Wishingen. No, my God, what am I saying? Wisconsin, Jesus. Well, yeah, I'm going to be posting a video on what's happening with me, but uh, Richmond, Virginia, Jackson, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, Missouri and Arkansas, New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, Augusta, Richmond County, Georgia, South Carolina, Detroit, Warren, Dearborn, Michigan, Cleveland, Ohio, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge, good for you. Okay, um, what does it mean to believe in this climate change lie? The implications of believing a lie is disastrous. Like here, Charlotte becomes the 19th winner of Bloomberg American Cities Climate Channel uh, Challenge. It's going to upgrade its fleet to electric vehicles and increase access to public transit to reduce carbon emissions. Michael Bloomberg, the United Nations Secretary General Special Envoy for Climate Action. Hey, Charlotte, you won. Michael Bloomberg, $70 million program that will speed up efforts in 20 cities to tackle climate change and promote a sustainable future for residents. Working toward a sustainable and resilient community will help create economic op opportunity for everyone through affordable housing, accessible transportation, and a clean energy workforce. And you're going to pay for it. Your taxes will increase quite a bit. And that affordable housing, the stacking packs, accessible tra transportation, getting you out of your car and into public transportation. The other cities that won, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, San Diego, Minneapolis, and Seattle. Winning cities of the channel, uh, challenge, challenge will be provided technical assistance and a support package to reduce carbon emissions. Um, yeah, Charlotte to upgrade its city vehicle fleet to electric vehicles and increase community-wide public transit by 41 percent. Wow. Nine federal workers across the country. So, 41 percent? That's a lot of people out of their cars and into public transit. And how will they do that? Well, there's, there's many methods. You know, you depress certain areas in a state, you impoverish those areas, they've got to move into the cities like Charlotte. Uh, you raise taxes and license fees and registration fees and gasoline. You increase the taxes on gasoline. You make it really difficult for people to own cars. And I guarantee you, that's coming to you. 
uh, what has happened to the beef industry. This was just posted January 4. The wild, the World Wildlife Fund has taken over the beef industry in the United States. What? What? Well, yeah. The World Wildlife Fund's Sustainable Roundtable now controls the beef packing industry, which in turn controls the entire beef retail market. Cattlemen either tow the World Wildlife Fund dictates or you're cut out of the industry. Cattlemen must follow massive regulations in order to produce American beef. Now this isn't about, you know, vegans please don't hit me with a lot of comments telling me I'm immoral for even, you know, thinking that beef should be eaten or whatever it is that you think. This is not, this is about how the United Nations is taking more and more control and the World Wildlife Fund is a United Nations um, is it a nonprofit? don't even know but it is under the umbrella of the United Nations they work with a whole lot of organizations to implement the United Nations Agenda 2030 so They literally have taken over the beef industry. I am telling you, all agendas full speed ahead. You may not see it, read it in your local newspapers, hear it on your local news, but it's happening every single day more and more people are facing financial ruin and a lot of these cattlemen they will be ruined by the massive regulations that they now have to um, comply with and if they can't afford to comply they're out of business that's the point. That's the point. You know, they are destroying small business, small farmers, small producers of beef, everything small because this is also a corporate takeover of everything in the world. So you destroy the small farms and, and the uh, small cattle operations and then what happens? You have the beef, certainly, but all of the food supply will be under the control of corporations. World Wildlife Fund has openly stated its opposition to beef production. They insist that to save the earth, it is demanded that we change human consumption habits away from beef. Meat consumption is devastating some of the world's most valuable and vulnerable regions due to the vast amount of land needed to produce animal feed and if you understand, you've done some research on Agenda 2030, the reshaping, the transformation of the world, the reshaping of this country into mega regions, they do not want human beings in the gray area. They are moving people around this country. How do they move people around? They cause weather events. Tornadoes take out whole towns. Flash flooding. Flooding of homes. 
the repeated flooding of homes, the fires in California, directed energy weapons. And when you get hit over and over again, you are suddenly living with less opportunity, options, and you're financially you know, brought to near bankruptcy, what, where do you go? What do you do? Well, the next video I will show you. You sell your home for pennies on a dollar to FEMA, and then you move into a city, and you get into a stack and pack, and you use public transportation. You get rid of the car because everything will become so expensive that you will have to rely on public transportation. But another method is, hey, let's have what little uh, employment is left here in our country from corporations. Let's have those corporations have their factories in mega regions and we will impoverish the rural areas so that people will have to move into the mega region to feed their children. There's many methods in which they are doing this. So I hate that they've been so successful, but they have been. All the gray areas, you will not see people. That land will be for wildlife. Um, because you living in these gray areas, it's just not sustainable. The only way that humans can live now is in tight mega regions and stack and packs using public transportation because, you know, cars, well, you're causing climate change, global warming. Um, living out here in the rural areas, sorry, no longer sustainable. And you cattlemen, well, it's unfortunate, but it's just not sustainable for you to uh, have cattle and you're just destroying the land. You're destroying the land. So you have to get off the land. We can't let you do this anymore. But we can let corporations do it. And corporations, well, if you've done if you've done any research whatsoever, you will know corporations are destroying this planet. I want you to listen to just a few minutes of this. By Nick on Granada Forum. Help get this information out far and wide. Because what you are going to hear next is something that is just going to boggle your minds, as it did our research team. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is artificially engineered storm surges and artificially engineered sea level rise. And this has all been by informed consent. We've all agreed to the climate action plans. And we're going to talk about that because we know for a fact that geoengineering, a.k.a. weather weapons, is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the Earth's climate that is creating the climate changes and the reason behind all the climate action plans and resilient plans adopted in every city, town, village, state, country, and nation throughout the world. These are climate action plans and resilient plans. For all of you that are listening, you need to type in and find out what your plan is in your area. That plan will outline the type of weather events that you are going to experience because they're creating them. And she is absolutely right. I will link below to everything. If you have not seen this video, I hope that you click on the link.
listen to what she has to say and circulate it. Coastlines under attack, and I will show you how they really are under attack. Now, these climate action plans, well, EPA, EPA, our Environmental Protection Agency, yes, it's right in there with the climate action plans. But what climate change means for South Carolina, this is just a two-page um, pamphlet. Yes, South Carolina's climate is changing. And what do they have for us? Well, a lot of flooding, a lot of flooding, 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 coastal areas, but also inland flooding. Uh, the fires, the, the Deborah Tavares, the climate action plan for her area, Santa Rosa, they talk about the fires. Lots of flooding. And the flooding is, I think, going to be even more extreme. I found it interesting that they continue to use this phraseology. Changing the climate. Changing the climate changing the climate. It's not changing climate or climate change. It's changing the climate, which that's the correct phrase because they're doing it deliberately. They're bringing about the flooding deliberately. But if you will never do any research to find out that what we are saying is true, then you will eventually suffer the consequences of weather being used as a weapon. You will not fight to uh, hold on to your property because Agenda 2030, private property ownership, it's not sustainable. Individual rights, not sustainable. And, well, poverty certainly is not sustainable. So they want to reduce, eliminate poverty. How are they going to do it? By reducing your standard of living, bringing everybody down to the same level. Everybody will be poor. When you have everybody poor, well, you don't have any poverty left, right? Because you don't have anything to compare it to. Oh, except the extremely wealthy. Um, so, and agriculture and farming and food uh, supplies will be less and trees are dying and, well, look at all of the aerosols, the, the poisons that they're spraying into the atmosphere, they call it geoengineering, to save us from global warming as they are saturating the air that we breathe with dangerous chemicals, heavy metals, biologicals, fungi, that's why you see fungal disease that is now just so out of control. Certainly in the trees around here, every tree is dying from fungal disease. And it's not climate change, it is what they are spraying. Um, so uh, there's many climate action uh, related plans just for South Carolina. We've got a, a, a Carolina climate resilience. They have conferences. This is the American Planning Association, South Carolina chapter. Uh, you know, it's, you can Google it, just like Deborah Tavara said, put in your town or your state Climate Action Plan, Resilience, and certainly if you are located, if you are living in that mega region, any of these mega regions, Cascadia, Northern California Front Range, Arizona Sun Corridor, Southern California, Texas Triangle, uh, Gulf Coast, Piedmont Atlantic, Florida, Northeast, any of these, you see the circle? That's the hub of the mega region where you'll have public transportation, 
You're stacking packs. But nobody will be on the coast because they're destroying the coastal areas all over the Gulf Coast, the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. They want everybody out of these gray areas into the mega region. But if you live in a mega region, you've got a climate action plan. Absolutely. Um, so the agenda for the 2018 conference and yeah, climate protection facts for South Carolina, federal legislation to cap and gradually reduce global warming pollution is essential for heading uh, off the worst effects of a changing climate and ensuring a prosperous future for the Palmetto State. Lots of information. The Union of Concerned Scientists, National Wildlife Federation, World Resources Institute, Energy by Numbers, Global Warming, South Carolina, the latest climate science, yeah, IPCC, National Assessment Reports, all states. There, it's, it, nothing has stopped. Nothing has stopped since Trump came into office. Everything is full speed ahead. Um, as sea levels rise, Florida property values will sink. Wow, okay. Um, used to be coastal properties. Well, they were very, very expensive. Now, the value is depreciating rapidly. Let me say this. Sell now. Sell now. Unless you can organize your entire coastal community to fight like hell. The Agenda 2030 and these climate action plans that are taking place. But that is highly unlikely. So sell now. Because you, you are going to lose so much money if you wait. Sea level rise has already sunk Carolina's beach property values by 1.6 billion. It is 7.4 billion for North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, and Florida because of sea level rise flooding. They bring about the flooding. They repeat the flooding in these areas, which then the value of your home depreciates, your flood insurance skyrockets, how many people are interested in your home? And then you've got these climate change lies. Oh, sea level rise and oh, honey, I don't think we should buy any property on the coast. So all of these people are looking at their homes depreciating and this depreciation is going to slide it's it's on a downward trajectory and it's going to speed up fast um, sea level rise is eroding home value and owners might not even know it I look at this woman and I think my god you don't know that climate change, global warming, all of it is a lie. You don't know that weather is being used as a weapon and they can bring those floods to your area. You don't know about Agenda 2030 and getting you into a mega region. You don't know about all of the external factors that are surrounding you that's destroying your, the value of your home, destroying your finances, and suddenly leaving you in a life that is a nightmare. You don't know that this is deliberate and that you're in a war. And for most people, they don't want to know, they don't care. 
if it hasn't affected them yet, but even if it affects them, they're just going to keep believing the official narrative. So this woman's home, a 1939 colonial in Charleston. Charleston. I've never been there, but I, well, so many people talk about how incredible it is and beautiful it is. And well, this woman had a 1939 colonial. And a year ago, she thought she could sell it for nearly one million. She tried dropping the price 11 times. And then, because she couldn't sell it, she tore it down. Um, each time that I was just finishing up paying off the bills, another flood would hit. And you don't know that that's not Mother Nature and not global warming, but it's man controlling the weather, bringing those floods to you. And if they did, if everybody did, then we might be able to get somewhere, somehow, I don't know. The trillion dollar coastal property bubble is ready to burst. This was last April, 2018. Oh, the flooding. Oh, the flooding. Yes. Trillion dollar coastal property bubble is ready to burst as global warming driven sea level rise and storm surges threaten more and more property with flooding. We are now seeing a pricing signal from climate change. Now, um, Miami coastal properties are seeing uh, a very slow appreciation, but those inland, the rates of appreciation for homes that are on in areas of higher ele elevation, they are appreciating. The coastal homes will depreciate. But when you read the tail end here, now, the chief economist for mortgage giant Freddie Mac warned in 2016 that the coastal property bubble will burst sooner than expected. Some residents will cash out early and suffer minimal loss. Others will not be so lucky. So you have people who are reading this who have coastal property. And they, well, it injects fear into them. And fear is a great motivator. But it's all based on a lie. Demand and financing could collapse before the sea consumes a single house. All right. Um, here. The ultimate question for owners of coastal property and the financial institutions that back them, who will be part of the smart money that gets out early and who will be with the other kind of money? So you read that, you have coastal property, and you're thinking, okay, I better put it up for sale now and get out. Because we have not been able to get anywhere with this war, completely ineffective, all agendas continue on. Sell now. Sell now because they will bring more flooding to you. Your home will only depreciate more and more. And as the coastal areas flood over and over, you will have less of a market of people who want to buy coastal property. That's the point. It's all deliberately engineered. New Jersey properties flood over and over again, costing taxpayers like you millions. Ah, okay. So the coastal property owners the, the properties in flood zones. Climate change, global warming. You keep getting flooded out, flooded out, flooded out, and you're costing the taxpayers a lot of money. Really? Okay. Uh, you have flood insurance. You have to have it if you're in a flood zone. 
So that flood insurance should be covering any of the damage from a flood. But no, they have to hook in this guilt thing. You know, it's your fault. You need to get out of those homes and stop costing the taxpayers money. FEMA. FEMA is stealing a whole lot of money, and I've done videos on this. Their National Flood Insurance Program. FEMA working with Red Cross. It's like a scam, the flood insurance, this national program. But no, they're going to, they're going to, yeah. If you stay in these flood zones, you stay in your coastal property and you're in an area that has had repeated flooding, you're going to soon see Americans turn on you because they believe the horse shit that they're fed. So, um, yeah, mounting climate worries push location, location, location off the beach. And there's more, but that will be part three of what is taking place with FEMA buying up property after property and whole neighborhoods and communities and towns. Yes, they're buying properties because they do not want you living there. Get out of the gray zones. Human habitation can only be in a mega region. Oh, where you will be controlled 24-7. Every aspect of your life will be controlled and it will be, oh, Big Brother 1984, except uh, Winston, the main character in 1984, he was able to escape, you know, the what was it, the television where you had Big Brother looking into people's apartments. They were surveilled 24-7 everywhere they went. There was only one little corner where Winston could write in his journal. And that little corner was uh, the cameras didn't extend to that little corner. You won't have a little corner at all. So, I feel sorry for these property owners. They've already taken major depreciation hits. Well, hang on to your property for a year. And I am telling you, the hit will be so hard that you will be in shock because they're going to make sure that your home becomes almost worthless. All links are below.